Thank you guys. Okay, I'm starting. So thank you guys so much for taking time out of your busy, super busy schedule, holiday schedule. I know it's super hard this time of year, um, but thanks for taking just like a half an hour to listen and to learn. And I know a lot of people had um, prior commitments tonight, And but if you're listening to the recording, thank you um, for taking a little bit of time to um, move your business forward. So today I'm going to share my screen. I'm going to be talking about how to rock your challenge groups. And I don't feel like I'm actually an authority on this right now because my challenge group pretty much consists of me and my coaches and a couple other people talking amongst ourselves about the workout that we did. So right now it's kind of sucking, but I really have um, in the past couple of months realized how important challenge groups are to my business. And so for the past couple months, I've been really um, kind of pouring my heart and soul and a lot of my time into um, having just like awesome, awesome challenge groups. So I'm going to share my screen. Why do I always forget how to do this? Um, how do I share my screen? It's at Bubbles. the bottom and it says share. Oh, I got it. I got it. I got it. Okay. Okay, can you see my screen? Thumbs up, yes. Okay. All right, so um, like I said, I've really been spending a lot of time um, kind of fine tuning my challenge groups, um, trying out different things um, because I've re I'm realizing how um, vital they are to my business. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about um, why and this presentation is four slides long. So um, yeah, it's pretty rocking. But um, why it's important, why challenge groups are so important, and then I'm gonna go over my 12 um, tips to a successful challenge group. And then I left a page blank at the end, and I thought maybe we could um, just take a couple of minutes to like brainstorm just some ideas that maybe you guys have used, and I'll add them to this presentation, and we can have it in the team page or whatever. So. You know, when new coaches come on, they can kind of see what our best practices are for running a challenge group. So if you guys have any ideas um, that have worked really well for you and your challenge groups, I'd love to hear them. I'll write them down and I'll add them to this presentation. So why are challenge groups so important? Well, challenge groups are, as you guys know, the core of our business, not only in a, you know, like a mindset way, like we joined this business because we wanted to help other people live healthy, fulfilling lives, but they're also important to move our business forward via building our team of coaches. And as you got, your business will grow as you begin to master running challenge groups. And what I have um, learned is great challenge groups and recruiting kind of go hand in hand. Um, my best coaches, my like rock star coaches have come from challenge groups. And I will be completely honest, I have had, you know, when I first started, I did have several coaches that did not go through a challenge group. They were interested in the business opportunity, um, but they didn't want to actually join a challenge group. They just wanted to kind of try the products and yeah, they're personal trainers or whatever. And those coaches dropped off really fast. And in fact, I had another personal trainer wanting to join my team and to make a long story short, but she didn't want to go through a challenge group. I said, you know, let's get started with the challenge pack. You need to go through a challenge group to see what it's like. Um, and she didn't want to do that. And to make a long story short, I told her it wasn't the right fit for her because I really firmly believe that the best coaches come from those who've experienced the products firsthand, they've experienced a challenge group, and they've had results. Because that way, they not only have it have results and, and, you know, they had, they know the products, but they also know our culture, and like what it's like in a challenge group, and what I do as a coach, and they can say, hey, I can, I can maybe do that too. And happy challengers become great coaches because they believe, I mean, this is, this was totally me. Um, I had no intentions when I went into a challenge group that I would come out as a coach, but um, I was a happy challenger and I became a coach because I believed in the program and I believed in the process. Where did she go? Challenge. Oh, there she is. Did she Hello? cut off for anybody? Can you hear me? 
You cut out for a second, but you're back, so that's good. Am I back? Okay. So, challengers will want to be coaches, um, but if you keep your challengers happy, you it's a win-win. You're either going to get an awesome coach or you're going to get an awesome referral. They're going to be a coach or you want them to be a referral. And this is no joke. I had a challenger who... I had a challenger, sorry, my computer. Um, I had a challenger who, she's not in my groups anymore. She's kind of off on her own. She had great results. She was just like an absolute rock star. And she emailed me um, yesterday and she said, you know what? I just sent out 300 um, holiday letters and I told them all about, I told everyone all about Beachbody and all about these great results that I've had. And, you know, she was just so excited about it. So that is like, that's 300 referrals for me. So she had a great experience, so she has no interest in being coached, but she, um, she's a great referral for me. All right, so my 12 tips for, um, hold on. My 12 tips, I don't know why this is not working. Okay, my 12 tips for running a great challenge group. Number one, be a product of the product, and I feel like, we, we hear this so often with Beachbody that sometimes we just kind of like roll our eyes or it kind of goes right over our head. But like, I am really serious this time. We, you have to be a product of the product because we have absolutely no right to tell people what to do and to coach our challengers through a process if we aren't doing it ourselves. We actually have to, um, we have to live the life that we want our challengers to live. And that means doing a program from start to finish. That means pressing play every day. And it doesn't mean that we don't struggle. It doesn't mean that we don't mess up and we're not perfect. We want it. Um, but if you struggle, you have to share that. You share that with your group. You share that with your challengers because they are going through the same thing. But it can't just be like a, a coach showing their struggles all the time. We also have to be an inspiration for these people. They need to look at you like, I have two jobs. I have, um, I have three kids. I'm super busy and I am making this work for myself. I want to inspire you um, to do the same thing. And so we can't just be a, a challenger who schedules or a coach who schedules their posts and go in, goes in and likes everything. We actually have to be, we have to live it. We have to be a product of the product. We have to be doing it. We have to be sharing our successes and our struggles. Um, and that is also a way that we're going to build trust and credibility among our, our customers. Um, number two, coach just don't cheer. So now, as a coach, absolutely, we are our customers' biggest cheerleaders. We um, provide inspiration, but we do also have to remember that we have to set aside a specific amount of time every day to actually coach our challengers. This means providing value. This means giving them meaningful ideas and feedback. It's not just liking their posts. It's not just saying, like, hey, great job. I mean, we do that you know, with sweaty selfies or whatever, but if they are struggling with something or if they are asking for advice, we need to provide, they are our customer, we need to provide them with the, we want to exceed their expectations, you know, they're not going into Target, they're going into Nordstrom with us. We want them to exceed their expectations. So that means giving meaningful, meaningful ideas, feedback, what do they need? Recipes, research, tips. Do they need tough love? And the best place to find all these things is what Gary Vanderchuk says is Google. If you don't know, I mean, today I had a um, someone in our snack and water group. They're like, oh, I can't get off coffee creamer and it's so good and everything. And I remember that I saw a recipe for coffee creamer or something. So I, and I couldn't remember where I saw it, but I Googled it and I sent her a bunch of ideas. So just things like that, providing actual value, not just Raw, raw, cheering stuff because we are a coach at the end of the day. Um, number three, and this is totally random, by the way. I just kind of stream of consciousness. Um, number three, run groups with other coaches, and I think that our our team is very um, good about this. We always team up and run with other coaches, and it's just great to get 
to, I mean, not only to have the help, but just to um, see how other groups are run. And as a new coach, you definitely need to run. I mean, for several months, I ran my groups with Kelly. And at some point, they get to be too big. I mean, I think one group, Kelly, remember we had like 150 people. And I actually had people commenting saying that they were like overwhelmed by everything. But right now, I'm running a group with um, some of my other coaches. And we have about um, 40 or 50 people. And that seems to be the right amount because, you know, half or more do not um, regularly post so running groups with other coaches is key and even if it's not your your personally sponsored coach you can team up with someone on another team which is actually great because then I mean people have different ways of doing things so you can get different ideas um, number four sending a welcome email with tips and a with sending a welcome email and tips and a sample meal plan. And now I've been doing this since the beginning and I created a template. It took me, you know, like an hour or two when I first started coaching and I still use the same one today. So I send all of my new challengers the welcome email. Hey, welcome to the group. The group's gonna start um, on such and such date. Um, we're so excited to have you. And then I'll attach my tips for the 21 day fix. And that is um, a document, and I'm more than happy to share this with anyone. You guys can make it your own. Just tips that I learned doing the 21-day fix um, when I first went through it. So, oh, sorry. Um, so, like, for instance, like, what weight, what kind of equipment you'll need. It's actually a lot of the stuff that's in, involved in prep week, like scheduling your workouts, um, some Shakeology recipes, things like that. And then I'll also attach a sample meal plan. And my sample meal plan is actually the meal plan that I followed, that I made for myself, that I followed when I first did the 21 Day Fix. So I tell people, like, look, you don't have to use this meal plan. I just... I'm giving this to you so you can kind of see the kinds of things that I was eating and how I spaced out my meals throughout the day. So that is just kind of like a getting started right call for, an, um, for my new challenger. So that's what I do for that. Um, number five, and again, random order, weekly challenges with prizes. I love the weekly challenges. I, mean, I think it really gets, even people, if people aren't commenting a lot, it kind of gets them involved because everyone wants to win something. You can do like a water challenge. You know, um, last week our group had like, see if you can go over your water by like 12 ounces. Um, during the holidays, we had a squat and gratitude challenge, like do 20 squats and um, you have to say like one thing you're thankful for. Um, with each squat, it could be a photo challenge, like plank in someplace cool, take a photo, whatever. And you know, if you see prizes on sale, like those headbands, I think Ashley bought like this grab bag of headbands for like 20 bucks. Or if you see water bottles on sale, just like little stuff, it doesn't cost a whole lot to send out, but that you can offer us prizes. It can even be like a $5 gift card to Starbucks, like stuff like that. Um, number six, send handwritten notes. Okay, this is something that I started to do um, a couple of months ago, and it got such a great response. Now, um, again, I am trying to exceed my customers' expectations. I want them to have an awesome, awesome experience. I want my customers to be my customers for life. So I send, I have like a list of all my customers and I send handwritten notes and it's, it's really easy, you guys, you don't have to do this every month. I mean, no one, I mean, that's ridiculous. You can do it like twice a year, for instance. So just have a list of all of your customers and do one a day and then just send them out at the end of the week. Just like, what I mean, it, once you start writing one, you'll understand like why, um, how easy it actually is. Just like, hey, just wanted to say how thankful I was that you're in my group. You're doing a great job. Keep up the great work. Like, whatever. People just like that you went the extra mile for them. I mean, people posted, like, my notes on Facebook and Instagram, and they were just, they were, they loved it. Um, so that's something that I do. I try to do one a day. Number seven, follow up personally one time a week. Um, especially if they aren't participating. So sometime between Friday and Sunday, I'll follow up with all of my challengers um, via personal message or voice message. Okay, so Ashley's the one who taught me how to do this. And it is like a godsend. I can send out 10 of these voice messages in less than five minutes. And it's a little bit like, it's a little bit nerve wracking at first. I mean, I literally told Ashley, I said, okay, type me out exactly what I need to say. But once you do one or two, 
it's, it's really easy and you can knock them out. No problem. It's just like, Hey, Ashley, it's Casey. Um, just wanted to see how you were doing. I know you're not posting in that group. I just wanted to make sure everything was okay. Um, hope you're having a great day, blah, blah, blah. So that's it. 20 seconds. You're in, you're out. And you know, it's also important that people know that you're a person. You're not just like this person scheduling posts behind a computer. You're a person. You have a voice. They can hear your inflection. They can hear that you, that you care about them. So sending voicemail, sending voice messages. Number eight, prep days versus prep week. This is something that I actually um, got from my coach, Sally Stevens and Melly, Melanie McDaniel. They actually run, they did prep days. So they do four prep days. They start on Thursday and they end on Sunday versus a whole prep week. And this has worked really well for me because I have a lot of challengers who, who are like in it for the long haul and they are um, in the group and they don't like the break. They just like to go on. They don't need the prep week. So I will end my challenge group on a Sunday and we will start the quote unquote prep week, prep days on Thursday. Um, and I found a ton of stuff like video, Autumn's videos, like in the back office that really explain really well how the 21 day fix works, how to meal prep. So with those videos, along with my, um, like the welcome email that I sent, I think that they have enough information to get started. So for instance, like the first day of my prep day is like rules and getting to know each other. Um, the next day we talk about our goals. The next day we talk about scheduling workouts and meal planning. And then like on Sunday we do our weight and measurements and everything. Um, so it's really condensed instead of a whole week. We really do, um, just four days, which has worked out fine for us. Number nine, an ongoing group. This is something that I just started last time. So instead of closing down your, you know, Turkey group and starting a holiday group, I keep the group going and I announced this to all of my customers. I said, this is what's going to happen. Um, if you want to leave the group. I am going to give you, um, I'm going to show you how to do that. There's like a little file in the file section to show you how to leave the group. And that's totally fine. You're not hurting my feelings. It's bless and release. You're on your own now, but just make sure that you tell your customer. I mean, make sure you tell your coach, um, how we can support you if you're not going to be in the group. So everybody stays in the group and most people are like, yeah, why would we ever leave? But, um, they, they, so they stay in the group and it also saves me a lot of time because I don't have to create another group, upload all the files. It's just always in there. And if I have a new file or anything, I'll, I'll add it and I'll just let the group know. So my group for now, until this doesn't work and I don't know why it wouldn't, but until I find that it doesn't work, I'm going to just keep having an ongoing group and just keep adding my new challengers into the ongoing group. And it's kind of nice because when a new challenger comes, you know, there's people to welcome them. Um, number 10, ooh, peek into other coaches groups. And I don't know, some people might be weird about this, but I am absolutely not. If you ever want to go peek into my group and like see how not rocking it is, you totally can. Um, I actually did this with Sally Stevens. Bye with Sally Stevens and Melanie's group and I it just like opened up this whole new world because they run their group so differently than I run my group and I just got I got so many good ideas and like as a teacher it's kind of like going and you know you're stuck inside your classroom all day but when you go out and you see how other people do things it's just it's really awesome to see and I so I've learned a ton from them so if you ever I mean I think that we should all be willing and open and putting ourselves out there at like, you know, sharing our group experience with other people. So I'm just added to the group and um, I'm just a fly on the wall and I just kind of look at their stuff. Um, Sarah. Okay, number 11, let them get to know you. So they have to know that you're an actual person. You're not just someone scheduling posts. You are a person. You have a life. You have um, a voice. Um, they need to see you if that is like video, if that is, um, however they, you can let them get to know you sharing your workouts, um, sharing pictures, videos, whatever. They really need to get to know you to help build that trust. Because again, going back to the beginning, if you want to build people for your team, you need to, 
you need to want them to like you so they will continue the journey with you as a coach. So they really have to get to know you as a person. And the last one is totally random. Um, I just started doing this actually is weekly shout outs. So every week I will have shout outs to people that I think are working really hard. And like the first week I had a video, I did a video shout out. This week I just did a little graphic of, it's right here, um, of the people who were doing a great job. And some people are really weird about, I mean, I like doing recognition for my challengers on my personal page, but a lot of people are weird about that. They don't want, you know, everyone knowing that they're going through this like, fitness thing or weight loss journey and I totally understand that but being shouted out in the group is like a safe place and everyone likes you know hearing their name and sometimes you send them a little prize and stuff um so that is that and that's it um I would love for you guys to ask any questions or to um to share anything that you have I'm trying to like stop sharing my screen hold on if you have anything that's worked really well in your group I would love love to hear it and add to my um add to this document so go for it oh my groups in the app oh, we don't do the app like no we don't do the app I'll just leave it at that we have okay. I was curious um what you did because I've been doing stuff in the app um, and I'm like back and forth, like if I like the app or not, because I feel like people share their workouts and log their workouts and log their Shakeology in the app and they like that part, but I miss that I can't go Facebook Live and I feel, I don't know, I'm like, I wish I could just meld the two together so I could take the benefits of one with the benefits of the other. I don't yeah, like okay. Well, I'll tell you why I didn't, I not doing the app. I did, I sneaked, I, I was a fly on the wall in Melanie, um, Melanie Helly's uh, mobile app group. And like, I love, personally, I loved it. I loved my psychology. I loved my workout. Boom, done. It wasn't a big deal. But I didn't like, there wasn't as much interaction, I thought, like, and I don't like doing things on my phone. Like, if I'm going to type a response to someone, I don't like doing it on my phone. Like, it's just, and I don't want to run two groups simultaneously because I had some people, because I, I asked my group, and a lot of people were on board with the app, but then some people weren't on board with the app, and I'm like, I can't run two groups, so I didn't do it. Yeah, um, like I said, I do both, and I kind of go back and forth by which one I like and which one I don't like. Um, but I loved your idea of, or you're saying, like, be a fly on the wall in somebody else's group to get ideas. Because I don't necessarily want to be like, hey, Casey, give me your entire script for your yeah. group because you put a lot of time and effort into that. But I'd love to be get inspired by what you're doing. And I think especially if you've been a coach like me who's been a coach for forever, I've been doing the same stuff for a long time. And it's when a new coach comes in and they have a completely different perspective that it's like, wow, I never would have thought of that or this or that. So I think that's really a good idea to, like, hey, take a sneak peek into my group. Yeah, and I've literally copied, and somehow I got into, um, what's her name, some top coach, I don't even know how this happened, but I got into a top coach's, like, clean eating um, group, so I literally went in, and, like, some of it was, like, not that good, but I literally went in, and I copied and pasted some of her stuff for my new clean eating group, and, like, in Sally's group, I, like, I, there's a lot of posts in there, like, yeah, I want to integrate that into my, you know. It's overwhelming sometimes to think about doing an entire new challenge group by yourself. Yeah. Um, Cause I know I've done that a couple of times, but if you take inspiration, I, we have to remember we're a team. And I know for me, when I like made my challenge group content, I was like, man, that was like my baby. It took a long time to create it. And it was like special to me, but then I'm like, well, if I ever want to, we, we should be coming together more to share ideas, not to cop, cause I don't want a coach to ever steal somebody's content and not have to actually work, but there is strength with somebody else's perspective and somebody else's post. But really at the end of the day, I mean, we're all saying the same thing, like get motivated, work with your emotions. I mean, it's just, sometimes yeah, one I mean, post will speak to somebody more than another. I mean, well, to be honest, like I, I copied and pasted your script for like the longest time. And I, I am totally fine. Like I've rewritten scripts several times over. I have no problem sharing those because I know when someone goes in there, they're not going to just, they're not going to like every single thing that 
is in there, nor do I, but you know, you can get inspiration by getting different scripts. So I'm more than happy to share. Like I've rewritten the script several times. Um, so you you know, if you want access to my Google drive, feel I can post it and just copy and save and don't mess with the original thing, but I'm more than happy to share all that stuff. Does anybody else have any tips or things they want to add about challenge groups that's working well? Or do you have any questions about how to make your challenge group better? Go ahead, Diana. So I was, um, I am running my challenge group on the app and I find that everybody has been like super chatty. Like they absolutely love it. They log in their shakes, they log in their workouts. Um, and they're just communicating more than they did in my last challenge group. And I can see who's working out and who's not. So I'm able to like check in with those people who aren't logging in their workouts. And today I did a, um, I just sent them all a note and I'm like, Hey, I'm going live on Facebook just for you guys. So I did a live feed on Facebook just for them. So if they wanted to go check that out, they could. And I talked about the health bet and all that. And then, um, I mentioned Sarah Gaub. Get go. I don't know how to pronounce her last name, but she was on the Beach Body um, Champions page today, talking about how she does that same thing Casey was talking about. She just has an ongoing Facebook group, and then she just adds people to that, even if it's mid month. And then her um, specified challenges, like the men's group or a mama's group or whatever she's doing on the side, she'll run that through the app. So then she's not like getting the groups mixed up or whatever. But I thought that was a good idea too. Yeah, I'm, I'm super inspired by, um, who was it that I was, Casey, we were just talking about this, that we just watched um, Shelly Hobbs on um, Best of the Best in the West. And she talked a lot about moving completely over to um, the app. And I'm like, I'm seriously like, struggling with this concept because you know it's sort of like why fix something that's not broken but I, I feel like maybe in January I'm just gonna try it and see how it goes one round and then I might just keep an ongoing group in Facebook for anyone that feels resistant to change and really wants to just stay connected on Facebook um, but I won't be you know like posting daily in that and just kind of letting people talk amongst themselves well, she's muted you're muted, you're muted. have you actually kelly like experienced the app the going through a challenge group via the app i didn't do a whole challenge group i used the challenge tracker for the health bet and i did follow someone's group like back in march or april when it first came out i don't know if that was ashley or someone added me so i have like one week set up in there or i mean one group set up in there. So I, I'm going to have to like do a lot of learning, I think. Well, the good thing about the app now they've changed it. And from the website, the challenge checker portal is really user friendly. Uh, so like Casey, you were saying you don't like to type out a big response on your phone. I'm the same way. So I was conscious to go into my challenge checker app website every single day. But it's really cool that like if you have a script that you've been using like that you really like that you want to put new challengers through like you know how normally like we have to copy and paste from a google drive into buffer or hootsuite mm -hmm. in the challenge tracker app if you've done the posts one time and scheduled them they're there that you just hit a button that says copy and schedule and it's like so easy like it's just you don't even have to highlight anything it's just copy and schedule and it makes it so easy and if you're running the group with other coaches that are admins in your group. Like, so I like to run my groups with my new coaches because they're in my challenge tracker app. They can see those old posts too. So if I have them scheduled a post, they're all there and I can be like, well, go to day 10 and the post is there and just hit copy and schedule from the previous group to schedule it to the new group. And it's really, it, I really, it's really user friendly. So that's my two cents. Oh, I like that you don't have to go from Facebook files to Hootsuite. You can just do it all in the app. I absolutely love that. Add photos, videos, you can do it all right there. Anybody else have any like words of wisdom about like things that have worked well for them in their challenge group? Can I say I love that you 
compared yourself to being, you're not Target, you're Nordstrom's because you're trying to have really great customer service. And um, I think that's a lesson that everybody needs to learn with challenge groups. And I think the more challenge groups you run, the more complacent, because I know I've ran groups like on complete autopilot before. And then at the end of the month, I'm like, why didn't my challenge group do good? Nobody participated. I'm like, because I was on complete autopilot and it was just ridiculous. So having that mindset that you are there to provide the best customer service to people that even if they don't become a coach, they, they go out of their way to send out 300 letters or whatever to people to, to refer you. Like that just goes to show you what amazing customer service you have as a coach. That's awesome. I just had to reiterate that. And remember, Ashley, when we were at Summit, um, we heard Ali Epham. She's Tara Carr's success partner. And um, she did one of the big talks and she said that like her challenge group is her jam and she spends, you know, that's where she puts like almost all of her time and effort because like you said, Casey, when you get, when you get people on board and they're feeling connected and they feel like this sense of community, they don't want to leave that. And so then they want to stay on as a coach. And Ali said like, every single day if somebody one of the new people that she's put into a group so like say her december group if they don't comment or respond she calls them out like right there in the group like megan i haven't heard from you today you know and then it's like whoa and then if megan doesn't respond that day then she's sending her a private message and if she doesn't respond to the private message and she's leaving her a voice message and then she's like then i'll even get on the phone if i have to but you don't want people slipping through the cracks and as a result you end up getting like people who are totally you know bought into it and um and i don't know i feel like i was way better at running my challenge groups last year and I need to get back to that because that's where all of you awesome coaches came from is when I was doing a better job at that. And I feel a lot like Ashley said, where sometimes I feel like I'm running on autopilot because it kind of feels monotonous. And so that's why I was hoping that maybe getting into the challenge tracker would make it feel a little bit more new and exciting again. Cause I need it for me too. Like I need the accountability for myself and these people, you know, are part of that. I think it would help. Like if you, um, if you like, it's tons of work, I know, but maybe over the break, and I'm planning to do this over the break too, um, it's just like rewriting another script, you know, like having another script option to do and like, you know, taking ideas from other coaches and or getting your team together and like having like, for instance, like Carrie wrote like a bunch of posts for me for our new group. And so, I mean, it's 21 days. It's not that big of a deal if a lot of people are pitching in and writing posts. And so your customers are seeing like new content. So if you have people doing five challenge trips and it's the same post over and over, like they're going to want, they're not going to hang out. Another thing that I did recently with my challenge, new challengers is, um, I think it was, maybe it was from Terror or it was from Summit, but you know how we do getting started right calls with our cust or our coaches? I was doing a getting started right phone call with my challengers, like for like just 10 minutes just to introduce myself because I feel like right now I'm working with a lot of people that are in my cold market that I don't know really personally. And I feel like that was part of the disconnect in my challenge group is I was getting people that were referrals or people who I'd been friends with maybe for six months or so on Facebook, but I wasn't, it wasn't somebody like Kelly who I've known for years and years or something like that. Like there are new people that I hardly knew, but getting them on the phone, I was able to talk about their goals and ask their permission. Hey, if you go missing, in which way do you want me to get a hold of you? Can I call you? Can I text you? What, what, what do you want me to do that? After how many days missing do you want me to reach out? How, you know, what do you need from me? And I feel that really, really helped my group. It really like helped me connect. And I was like, and we can do these calls, you know, weekly, every two weeks. Cause at the end of the day, like, like you said, our best coaches will be challengers. Um, and so giving them that quality service from the beginning. I mean, it doesn't really even take that much time to hop on the phone with somebody because I think people need to know that we're real people. And I think through Facebook, especially if they don't know you well, because they're cold market people that you don't know, like they don't, you're just a stranger to them. I was listening to something the other day. Um, I think it was one of the best in the best. And she said that every new challenger like group that she has, they hop on a zoom call. Um, and she said, it's like, I don't know who it was. She said it was like amazing because you get to, they get to know you, you get to know them. Um, and just doesn't, it doesn't have to be that long, but that scares me to death. But 
it sounds like a great idea that I will definitely like go outside my comfort zone to do. I've done that before. It's really fun. And it gets the challengers to get to know each other and be like, hey, I'm so-and-so. This is my goal. Because sometimes it's a bunch of strangers coming together. So. You feel like you're part of the team. I have a quick ad before I forget. I started doing my own little memes for the group instead of getting them off of like Google. So for my photos that go along with the post, I've just been doing my own. And sometimes it's a picture of myself kind of blurted out and I'll post one in the group page. Um, and the challengers like it because they kind of see that it's not just something off of Google and it's more personal to them and they kind of have that additional connect too and they're really easy to do so. so yeah new images i love because i feel like even if you keep the post content kind of the same the new image makes it feel a little bit different and even changing and tweaking a little bit uh, but yeah i would be totally up for maybe over break or something anyone who wanted to hop on a zoom and you know if there were like i don't know 10 or 12 of us on and we each took a day or two and just, you know, said, okay, to, you research something about water, you research something about building muscle, you know, you research just something about, you know, when you fall off the bandwagon. And then we just paste it all in a Google Doc. I mean, the nightly check-ins are so easy, a couple bonus posts throughout the week, and then everyone's responsible for creating like two graphics. And we could have a fresh just for January, you know, that is really That's fresh. A great idea staying away from everything 21 day fix, because I do love 21 day fix, but there are so many other programs out there that I think people forget about because we focus on 21 day fix. And I want my customers to know that, look, once you've gone through the 21 day fix, which is a really great program to start with, like get core to force or get a 21 day fix extreme or whatever. And you don't have to be doing 21 day fix. And that creates that residual customer too. We're going to get cut off for time here, though. All right, ladies. Okay, awesome. ladies, see you guys later. I will upload this call probably tomorrow or the next day. But I love that idea. Let's maybe make an event in the big team page or something and then collaborate for time on that. Bye, guys. Bye.